Okay, so we're going to get started with our <coughs> presentation. Um, I think it's worth saying it feels a bit strange going from that space that we just had into a, a kind of formal presentation, but we'd like to update you on, uh, on the last cycle that we've had from the kind of project's point of view. So um, that's what we'll be doing. Uh, the presentation is going to consist of, um, I'm going to present on the kind of breakdown of the last cycle. Um, Kate is going to talk to you about the uh, network performance um, from what we found from the um, annual report. And um, Aaron is going to talk to us about the uh, prison audit work that we've been doing over the um, last year in particular. Again, just to reiterate, fire alarm is going to go off and it's probably going to go off midway through Katie talking. So we will try and be aware of it and, and just carry on as normal afterwards. So just a brief introduction to the team. So we've got Sarah Padgett as our program manager, as I'm sure you're all uh, very familiar with. Myself as deputy program manager, my name's Francesca. And then we have Katie and Aaron, who are our project workers. Uh, our team was up to full capacity in uh, October, November of last year. So um, we're still relatively new, uh, but we've very much been enjoying the last cycle. So in terms of our uh, breakdown of membership based on type of membership, as you can see, we have a total of 81 members. Um, that was based on um, a count taken at the very end of the cycle. So 81 mem members made it through the, the, the full annual cycle. Uh, as you can see, the majority of our members are within the children and young people's services, um, followed by the HMP prison services, and then uh, we have fewer numbers within the mental health services and uh, NHS. And then we also do have a, a, a few members uh, within the addiction services. So in terms of the breakdown, um, in terms of type of membership, I'm just going to briefly explain what um, each of the type of membership means. Firstly, we've got accreditation. This is a three-year process um, in which services have to review against all of the uh, community of communities standards and then ultimately um, is, uh, are become accredited by the Royal College of Psychiatrists. Um, this also involves a submission of reports and a decision made by the therapeutic um, community's accreditation panel, so it's quite a rigorous process. There's also additional benefits involved, such as um, we're able to um, offer training to two members of staff from accredited services in TC specialism. So we're looking to put on some more, more training throughout the next cycle. Uh, next, we have most of our members, over 50% of them are within the full membership category. This involves completing a self-review and having a peer review visit. Uh, it also involves a commitment to attend other peer review visits. Um, and then things like uh, draft reports and final reports are given uh, with quite a rigorous action planning um, process in order to encourage uh, quality improvement. We then have the developmental and the associate members who both fill out um, a self-review workbook. Developmental members are able to attend peer review visits um, and that's something that we encourage in order to, to network and, and see um, areas of good practice in other services. Associate members don't attend peer review visits, but our associate members tend to be our overseas members. Um, so we do have services in Australia, India, um, across the world. So um, they tend to, but they do submit a self-review workbook and we produce a draft um, and final report for them based around um, action planning, etc. So in terms of the next two um, graphs, this is a breakdown by sector and client population. So what we're keen to see is if um, the, these graphs are represented here today in the delegates. So we're going to do a quick exercise. So if you wouldn't mind um, standing up if you worked, work in the independent sector. I thought no one was going to move then. <laughs> okay. That doesn't seem to be a majority, so that, that's not... That. Yeah, sorry, uh, private. private <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry. No, but either independent or private. <laughs> They're not voluntary. Not voluntary. Yes. Okay, you can sit down. And then if you work for the voluntary sector or other sector. There's lots of people who haven't stood up yet. Yeah, yeah, I'll get there. And then what about... Oh, sorry, sit down. And then what about the... Um, Prison service. <laughs> or oh, criminal justice sector, sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then NHS. So we've actually got quite an even spread 
I would say that it, it, I think it represents the graph roughly, although I think we do have quite, quite an even spread. Okay, so now if you stand up, if you work for a children and young person's service. Okay. Okay, if we sit down. Um, what if, um, if you work for, not work for, but are, are a community member of um, an offender or, or prison service? Again. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Both. Yes. So Millfields would be... Okay. But in terms of client population... Yeah. In terms of client population, do you work with offenders? Yeah. If you work with offenders, stand up. Okay, yeah. I'm not doing a very good job at this, sorry. <laughs> okay. And then what about a community member of any other service, just to see what... So one I haven't covered. Feebly. Okay. Have we got anybody from a mental health service that's not specifically personality disorder? Sort of the severe and enduring mental health problems. Okay, so hopefully that gives us an idea of, of at least the diversity of the membership that we have within community of communities. So that's something that we're we're very proud of and, and like to celebrate at events like this. Okay, so moving on, in terms of the um, review breakdown and activity that we've had over the last cycle, we had a total of uh, 58 visits, um, 42 of those were um, peer review visits, we had 13 accreditation visits and we've included the HMP audits under that um, category, although they're not technically um, accredited by the Royal College of Psychiatrists, we have included those in those numbers. Um, we also had three pilot HMP TC plus um, audits, which refers to, the TC plus side refers to um, prison TCs working with offenders with learning disabilities. Um, and these sites include Grendon, Gartry and Dovegate. So that was piloted this year. And then most importantly, looking towards 2016-2017 uh, reviews, these are going to begin in August and run straight through to February 2017. And we have actually distributed dates last week, so hopefully everyone's seen those. Other activities um, that we have coming up in the, um, in the next cycle include, we have five... Um, um, events coming up. We've got two self-review workshops um, in order to help some of our uh, members get the best out of their self-review. Uh, we do get regular feedback about um, how services may struggle to engage with their service users in terms of self-review um, and to make sure that they get the best out of their peer review visits. Um, we also had um, introduction to group work and group work for intermediates and we also had a reference group which is a group where we invite all um, members to attend prior to an advisory group to discuss the current activities that we've got going on and to gain some feedback. Um, unfortunately, the reference group wasn't as well attended as we thought it would perhaps be, so we'd really like to encourage you to use the Bright Ideas Board um, throughout the day to generate some ideas about how we could engage you further. Um, we also ran an art competition. Uh, the winner of the art competition was Alicia from Northley House, and her um, Photographs were called Life, Light and Shadow. You can see um, the other pieces of artwork out um, in the foyer as well, um, if you'd like to look at those later. We also have um, two annual reports that are... That's not as loud as I thought it would be. <laughs> so I feel like we made a bigger deal out of that one than we should. Um, so we had... Um, yeah, we've got two annual reports coming out. The Community of Communities one that um, summarised all the findings from the last cycle. Um, we were hoping to have a couple of copies um, available today and they should have arrived by lunchtime, so hopefully we can, um, people can have a look at those. We also have an HMP national report that summarises all of the findings um, from the prison audits also. Um, we also had um, a couple of newsletters. We had a Christmas edition and we're looking to publish another one after the annual forum. Something we are interested in understanding um, from our members is how many people would have seen the last, annual, last year's annual reports. If you could raise your hand if you have, if you did see it. Not many. And then what about the, the, the Christmas edition that we did of the newsletter? Okay, that's better. 
So this is something that we, we foresee as a challenge for the, for the project, is trying to get the information out there to our services and not just to the lead contacts, but to make sure that it's being disseminated down throughout the community and to the service users. So we would also appreciate some of your thoughts on the Bright Ideas Board about how we could do that a bit better as well. Okay. So finally, I would like to touch upon um, some of the current challenges that uh, we see at, at Community of Communities for our membership. I think there's an obvious uh, current financial and political um, climate at the moment, and the competing demands on services is, is causing difficulties for TCs. Uh, the regulatory frameworks and commissioning arrangements that are in place often conflict with the psychosocial approach that everyone is obviously trying to, to sustain. So, for example, things like NICE guidelines and the emphasis on um, evidence-based treatments is causing difficulties. I think CFC, the project team here, um, attempt to recognise this within our work and essentially exist in order to support services um, and create a network of peers. Finally, looking to the future and the uh, developments for the 2016-2017 cycle, we already have some events in the calendar. Um, we've got a core, standard work core standards workshop taking place in July. We have peer reviewer and lead reviewer training uh, taking place in uh, June and October. We also have a Manchester venue for those um, services that are based further up north and find it perhaps a little bit difficult to uh, get down to London. We also have POD, we have, uh, it's, called a patient, it's called the Patient Owned Database. Um, this kind of does what it says on the tin, it's essentially a database where service users um, can access it and update their information um, and progress and, and give information. Um, we ran a training session recently which was quite successful with the people uh, who already have subscriptions. We have about eight services, but we're looking to further develop this into the next cycle. We're also looking to develop and pilot the uh, therapeutic childcare standards. Um, we are looking to recruit five to six pilot services. So if you're interested in this, please do contact us. But we will also be contacting services. Um, this also links nicely to Space House. This is something that we're also looking to review and implement. Space House is a data collection tool for children and young people. It's a, a kind of child-friendly way of approaching the self-review and getting information. It essentially tells a story um, online and um, children access it and answer uh, different questions to gather, gather data and, and help you as services uh, to involve your, your children and young people in the process. We're also looking to maintain and grow our contracts with external bodies. Aaron will be touching upon the um, HMP contract that we held um, in order to do our prison audit work. And um, furthermore, we're looking to update and develop our information systems in the hope that we can simplify our reporting and our communication with our members. And finally, to develop LD-friendly standards and resources, mostly for our TC Plus sites, um, in order to make that information more, more applicable. I'm now going to pass over to Katie, who's going to present on the network performance of last cycle. I just have to... <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Francesca. So, as many of you know, each cycle we send you a self-review workbook. And each cycle, depending on your membership and the year of your membership, you complete a peer review workbook because we send you a peer review team. From this, it generates an awful lot of data. What we now do as a project team is we create an annual report. We compile all of this data together and create this report each year. This allows us to have a lot of analysis and to find out lots of things. The graph behind me, for instance, is one of the things that we like to focus on. We like to see how we've improved and how our membership have improved from cycle to cycle. The graph behind shows, in yellow, the percentage of the membership who met the core standards from 2015 to 2015 cycle. The one in purple is the 2014-2015 cycle. As you can see, every single standard has improved, which is a fantastic achievement. What we can also see is that core standard one which is that there is a clear therapeutic community model of practice that is consistently applied across the service, has risen from being met by 53% of the membership to 70%. Similarly with core standard four, the community members work together to review, set and maintain community rules and boundaries, used to be met by 60% of the membership. Now it's met by 84%. This really shows that the hard work that our members put in is, show, is paying off. These graphs also show you the core standards from last cycle and the cycle just gone. However, these show you an average as well. 
They also show you how our membership is split into sectors. So we can see the average of the service user population for CYP services or for mental health services or offender services. This allows us as a project team to find where particular sectors of our membership might need more support in improving and where, people, and where services might have improved more. We can see, for example, that mental health services have improved a great deal since last cycle and the average as well has also risen. Again, this is a great achievement. It also allows us, through all our analysis, to pinpoint which standard overall was met by the highest percentage of our membership and which one needs the most improvement. From that, we can also look at the criteria within the standards. So we can see that 4.3 was met by 93% of the membership, which was the highest score. We can see that 2.1, which is located in the staffing standards, was met by 61% of the membership. And although this was the least met standard, 61% is still quite a high number. We can also break it down further and look at the criteria. So we can see that 1.32, which is located in the core standards, was met by 97% of the membership, which is fantastic. But then we look on the other side and we see that 4.43, which is located in the therapeutic framework standards, was met by 39% of our membership. This means that we need to support our membership in being able to, to meet the standard around this confidentiality. As I said, there's an awful lot of data that we have in this annual report and we can't talk about it in half an hour. Please, if you can, it would be great if you can have a look at the annual report, which is available today, but please don't take this home. We're going to be sending each of your services a copy of this report in the coming weeks. I'm now going to pass over to my colleague, Aaron, who will talk about our audit year of HMP Democratic Therapeutic Communities. Can I put this on? Thanks, Katie. Um, so it's great to see a number of the prison service um, here today to represent us at the annual forum. Uh, the Community of Communities is contracted by the National Offender Management Service to deliver compliance audits for democratic therapeutic communities in prisons. As an accredited offending behaviour programme, the TCs are required to operate in compliance with the accredited HMP Democratic Therapeutic Communities core model, which is accredited by the Correctional Services Advisory and Accreditation Panel. This year, the audits took place in 11 TCs across five prisons, four at HMP Grendon, four at HMP Dovegate, HMP Gartry, HMP Send, and HMP Warren Hill. This was at a rate of one audit every week between October and February. We have this year also held pilot audits for learning disability units in three prisons, HMP Gartry, HMP Dovegate, and HMP Grendon. These are commonly known as TC+, as Francesca mentioned earlier. The processes at these units are contextualised to support offenders with learning disabilities in accessing the TC process. There are also two assessment units at HMP Dovegate and HMP Grendon, who are currently part of the Community of Communities Quality Improvement Process. These units receive a peer review every year. The audit process aims to evaluate and improve on the quality and effectiveness of the therapeutic communities within the prison service. The audit visit takes place every two years, depending on results, and is a two-day process. It involves staff and service users from non-prison TCs, as well as staff from prison TCs, who form the peer review team. A TC specialist, a psychologist, and a, an operational auditor and a lead reviewer also attend. Each auditor is responsible for evaluating certain standards that are considered critical to the management of therapeutic communities in prisons and their overall function in addressing offending behaviour. The visit combines exploration of the self-review, peer discussion, assessment of records, observation of the TC's normal functioning and formal and informal interviews with staff and residents, both individually and in groups. During the second year, a peer review takes place to look at the community of community service standards for democratic therapeutic communities and focuses on standards relating to the TC's action plan. Tailored support visits from specialists take place at the TC's based on findings and recommendations from year one to assist them to improve services and maintain or achieve compliance with the core model. The minimum compliance scores are 80% for the core standard section, 60% for the four other sections, which are institutional support, treatment management and integrity, continuity and resettlement and quality of delivery, and also 70% overall compliance in order to be accredited. The five areas covered 
at the audits are core standards, which are standards deemed critical for the therapeutic community practice. They are the same set of 10 standards that all services are evaluated against in self-reviews and peer reviews. Institutional ex support examines whether TCs have adequate facilities, are properly resourced to deliver the TC core model, and measures the support each TC receives from the host establishment. Treatment management and integrity is concerned with the management of staff and the treatment environment. Continuity and resettlement examines whether procedures are in place that appropriately record residents' work in the TC and that it feeds into overall case and sentence planning for the remainder of the sentence or following release. Quality of delivery examines whether the TC operates according to the treatment approach identified in the core model and in accordance with recognised TC standards and looks to ensure that the approach is having an effect on residents' risk factors. Local and national reports are produced by the community of communities and then presented to Correctional Services Accreditation and Advisory Panel for approval. We are currently unable to disclose the data and results from the audits this year, as we are yet to present these to the Correctional Services Accreditation and Advisory Panel. We can, however, see the data from the previous audit year, 2013-2014. In the core standards section, there was an average score of 90% across the CECs, with 9 out of 10 services fully meeting standards relating to community, community <coughs> members, taking part in the day-to-day -day running of the community, sharing responsibility for the emotional and physical safety of each other, and are active in the personal development, care and or treatment of each other. We are hoping to see further improvements, which we'll be able to report on in our HMP National Report. We'll now open the floor to questions.